Now I want to speak about public housing. HDB is a vital part of the Singapore story. Right from the very start, the PAP government put heavy emphasis on public housing. Here is Mr Lee Kuan Yew laying the foundation stone at the Cantonment Road housing estate in March 1963. This was HDB's earliest projects, one of them. Mr Lee was convinced that housing would give Singaporeans a stake in our nation's future because, he explained, housing gives more than a sensation of permanence. It is permanent. Then we dig our toes in and we fight. So housing has always meant much more to us than a roof over our heads. It also gives every Singaporean a valuable asset and a powerful reason to fight for our country and our future. Fast forward 60 years, today we have one of the highest home ownership rates in the world. Nine in 10 Singaporeans own our own homes. Eight in 10 live in HDB flats. Our Singaporean identity is deeply intertwined with our HDB flats and towns. These are homes we are proud to own, neighbourhoods we raise our families in, and communities we build together. Over the decades, the government has kept housing affordable and accessible for Singaporeans. We price HDB flats at a substantial discount below their market value. We also provide a wide range of generous grants to first-timers, families, and the lower income. COVID disrupted our public housing program. BTO projects were delayed. The shortfall of new flats pushed up prices of resale flats. And MND and HDB have been working very hard to catch up. They are making good progress. So far, HDB has completed and delivered more than 70% of the flats that had been delayed by the pandemic. And we are also ramping up supply. We've launched 50,000 flats since 2021. By 2025, in two years' time, we'll have launched another 50,000 flats, making a total of 100,000 flats. With supply catching up, the market is calming down. First-timer BTO application rates are lower. Waiting times are shorter. Resale prices are gradually stabilizing. Recently, MND announced changes to help Singaporeans with urgent housing needs get their flats earlier. Families with young children and young married couples buying their first home will receive more ballot chances and higher priority in flat allocation. HDB will also launch more BTO flats with shorter waiting times of two to three years. And we're working extra hard, and I'm confident that we'll get over this hump soon. Tonight, I want to look beyond this hump to the longer-term public housing landscape. Since the early 90s, HDB has used a simple framework to guide the public in buying flats. We distinguish between mature estates and non-mature estates. Mature estates are places like Ang Mo Kyo, Tua Payo, or Queenstown. This is a picture of Dawson in Queenstown, where I recorded my National Day message this year. Mature estates are usually more centrally located, better connected, and with more amenities. And naturally, these places are more popular, and their prices reflect the higher demand. Then there are the non-mature estates. These are less central and further out, like Jurong East, and Woodlands, and Pongo. What non-mature estates lose in terms of location and convenience initially they make up for in lower BTO prices. Between mature and non-mature estates, HDB has been able to offer a flat for every household's budget. This framework is easy to understand and has worked well for many years. But our housing landscape is evolving. Firstly, we have fewer and fewer large tracts of undeveloped land left to build new towns and estates. Tenga will be the last new town for quite some time, at least until Pai Lebar Air Base moves out to Changi, and the site is cleared and redeveloped. Increasingly, we'll have to build new HDB flats within or near to existing estates, and these will often be more centrally located. For example, at Mount Pleasant, where the police academy used to be, we are planning to build 5,000 new homes there. New projects like these, nestled in older, more developed areas with a lot more amenities, will be more popular and will naturally cost more. Secondly, even what we call non-mature estates today have become much more developed. 
We imagine non-mature estates as being very bare bones, blocks of flats surrounded by empty barren ground. Our mental image is this photo. And once upon a time, it looked like this. This was Topayo in the 1960s. Topayo doesn't look like this today. But look around you now. Towns like Jurong East, Woodlands, or Pongo. That's not bare bones. These towns have matured and now have excellent connectivity and a full suite of amenities. So the distinction between mature and non-mature estates is blurring. And this is reflected in BTO applications. Some choicer projects in non-mature estates are even more popular than projects in mature estates. And it shows that buyers are discerning. You know when you see a good deal and what matters to you are the specific attributes of the project rather than whether we call it mature or non-mature. In future, many more BTO developments will be in estates or locations that are effectively mature. And that means the framework of mature and non-mature estates will no longer work and we need a new framework. This new framework has to achieve three important objectives. One, it has to keep home ownership affordable to all income groups. Two, it has to maintain a good social mix in every town and every region. And three, it has to keep the system fair for everyone. And here's how we'll do it. For a start, we will keep HDB flat prices affordable. We will gradually provide more housing grants, especially grants that are means tested, like the enhanced housing grant. This way, lower and middle income households will get the most support to own their homes. There will always be an HDB flat to meet every budget and we can maintain a good social mix in every town and region. This will work for most HDB projects, but it will still leave one particular problem, and that is with projects in choicer locations within a region. For example, projects near an MRT station or near the town center. Such flats see the highest demand during BTO exercises. People know that HDB is offering a good deal because these flats will fetch much higher resale prices afterwards. And this turns the BTO exercise into a lottery. Those who are lucky enough to ballot such a flat stand to reap a windfall upon resale. And this will not be fair to the many more who miss out. Take, for example, one recent BTO project, Central Weave at Ang Mokyo. This is Ang Mokyo. Let me zoom in. Central Weave is right at the town centre. Let me zoom in a little bit more is next to the MRT and bus interchange. The market is there, the hawker centre is there, Ang Mokyo hub is nearby. So location, location, location. This is an excellent location, it's a highly desirable project. And HDB selling price had to reflect these attributes. So the prices for the biggest flats at Central Wii, five room and three gen flats, range from 700 plus thousand to 877,000 before grants. Even then, these flats were heavily discounted off their true market value. Some people complained that these prices were exorbitant and unaffordable, and yet these units were heavily oversubscribed. More than 6,500 households applied for just 372 such flats. 17 applicants for every flat. And clearly these applicants must have found the Central Weave project affordable and thought that the prices offered them good value. And no doubt many hoped that flat would, flats would fetch strong resale prices later on. So think about it. If you are HDB CEO sitting down, confronted with this problem, what will you do? You have a dilemma. A dilemma with projects at choicer locations like Central Weave. Should we price them higher or lower? If we price them higher, we will shrink the windfall gains, we will reduce the lottery effect. This will moderate demand, and that's good. But there will be sticker shock. These flats will become expensive and unaffordable to most families, and we won't get a good social mix. Some people will still afford them, but mainly those near the income ceiling or those whose parents can help them pay for the flat. And the result, the precinct will become 
a higher income enclave. And that is not what we want. But if HDB prices such flats lower, more households can afford them, we achieve a better social mix, that's good. But then we have, we exacerbate the lottery effect because the potential windfall will be even richer. It's not just tio bei pio, it's tio tao pio. <laughs> even more families will try for these flats and for every one happy successful buyer, there'll be maybe 20, maybe more unsuccessful buyers. And they will be understandably and justifiably frustrated and very unhappy. And this is not fair. So under the present framework, whether we price such flats higher or lower, we cannot fully achieve all three objectives. Affordability, a good social mix, and a fair outcome. So what do we do? Central Weave is already sold, but we can expect more such situations as we build more flats in existing towns. How do we solve this problem? Our solution is to introduce a new plus model for selling HDB flats at choicer locations with stricter sale conditions so that we can moderate the prices. And let me explain carefully what I mean. Today, HDB launches BTO projects all over Singapore. We're all familiar with them. Everybody knows the BTO rules. For example, a five-year minimum, minimum occupation period, or MOP, after which the owner can resell the flat. And there's no income ceiling for resale buyers. These are standard rules and apply to what I will call standard projects. In future, most HDB projects will still be standard projects. But within each region, some HDB projects will be in choicer locations. Take, for example, Bayshore in Bedou. This is Bedou town. Bayshore is there, let me zoom in, and you can see Bayshore is a very good location for homes because we've got two MRT stations, Bedok South and Bayshore MRT stations. Shopping malls will be built in this corner. Siglap CC is there. East Coast Park is across the road. And then you have the waterfront. Again, all the Yoshan Yoshri. <laughs> we will have both private and public housing in Bayshore. And the HDB projects will likely be plus projects and will be sold under different rules. HDB will give more subsidies for these plus flats over and above the subsidies for standard BTO flats. This will moderate the price of plus flats and put them within reach of more households. But to make the scheme fair, HDB will also impose more restrictive restrictions, more restrictive sale conditions. For example, a longer MOP of 10 years to favor buyers who are planning to stay there for the longer term and discourage those who may be thinking of flipping the property and moving out as soon as they can. Tighter restrictions when the homeowner resells a plus flat later on, such as a subsidy recovery applied on the resale price, certain percentage when you sell the price, when you sell the flat, you pay back a certain percentage to HDB to take back the extra discounts you enjoyed upfront since you are moving out. And this is to be fair to other buyers who didn't get these plus flats. Also, there will be an income ceiling on resale buyers, just like how we have an income ceiling on first-time buyers. And this will moderate the resale prices and help to maintain a better social mix, even in the resale market in the longer term. As we build more projects in mature areas, this PLUS model will help us to meet our three objectives, affordability, good social mix, and fairness. I keep on showing you this slide because these, this is crucial. These are the three fundamental objectives and we must bear that in mind when we think, what is HDB doing? Why is HDB doing this? How does doing this help us to achieve these objectives? It will help Singaporeans find a house that suits your needs, even in good locations. Not just for you, but your children too. Actually, the PLUS model is not entirely new. We already have something similar called the Prime Location Public Housing Model. It's a lot of words, so let's just call them Prime Projects for short. One example is Bukit Merah Ridge. Like other Prime Projects, it's very close to the city centre. Naturally, these flats are very desirable and will be more expensive. But we've been able to keep 
their selling prices reasonable by imposing tight restrictions and also a subsidy recovery to moderate the windfall gains. The prime model has shown good outcomes so far. In Bukit Mira Ridge, the selling price for a four-room flat ranged from 540,000 to 737,000 737, before grants, and each flat attracted 5.4 applicants, far fewer than Central Weave, even if you compare to the four-room flats at Central Weave. And we hope that PLUS projects will achieve similarly good outcomes. So let me go back to Central Weave because you are probably thinking and asking, had we sold Central Weave as a PLUS project with the tighter restrictions and additional subsidies, would HDB have priced it lower than it actually did? And the answer is yes, it would. Because that's the whole point of PLUS projects, to enable HDB to moderate the prices of flats in choicer locations and still be fair to all flat buyers. So think of it like this. Standard flats are good flats built all over Singapore and will have HDB's standard subsidies and standard restrictions. Plus flats are in the choicer locations within a region and will have more subsidies and tighter restrictions than standard flats. Then prime flats are in the choicest and most central locations in the whole of Singapore and they'll have the most subsidies and the tightest restrictions. Let me show you the whole picture in one slide. The new, the new framework, standard plus prime. Standard island-wide, subsidy is standard, restriction standard. That's why we call it standard. <laughs> plus flats, choice of region, more subsidies, tighter restrictions. Prime flats, choicest locations, most subsidies, tightest locations. Actually, the quality of the flats, they're all good flats, good flats, good flats. <laughs> but the locations are different, the subsidies are different, the restrictions are different. And this new framework, standard, plus, and prime, will be a major change to the way HDB sells flats. HDB will roll out this framework for all new projects from the second half of next year. It will not affect existing projects. Your current homes or the homes you've already booked will not be reclassified in time to come, we will no longer refer to new projects as mature and non-mature. Instead, we will build a good mix of projects within and across regions to cater to different needs and budgets. And that's how we can fulfill our commitment to keep high quality HDB flats accessible and affordable to you and to your children for a very long time to come. The new framework, standard, plus, and prime, will affect everyone buying a new HDB flat. But there's one special group I want to address, the singles. More and more Singaporeans are choosing to be single. Singles, too, hope to own their homes and have more housing choices. We hear your concerns. Today, first-timer singles can apply for new flats, but only two-room flexi flats and only in non-mature estates. They cannot buy new flexi flats in mature estates. Singles are also not allowed to buy prime flats. These rules are to prioritize our limited supply of flats, but unfortunately they have restricted singles choices. And we will do something about this. When we roll out the new framework, singles will be allowed to buy two room flexi flats across all types of BTO projects, standard, plus, and prime. HDB will tell you the details soon, but I'm sure singles will welcome this move to have more choices, to find your own home, and to write your own part in Singapore's housing story. <laughs>